C-SPAN. They got him off his chair, his big chair at DHS. Listen to what he says in clip eight. Public awareness, public vigilance, and public participation are important to our homeland security. We are oh creating God. an intermediate level you know, this to is the sickening. NTAS system that includes an NTAS bulletin. You hear this? A bulletin they're going to put out. General developments or trends regarding oh my threats God. of terrorism. Who is this idiot? We do this in public speeches, in public statements. Oh, that's going to stop for ISIS. law enforcement. With joint intelligence, okay. I, 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 you know, look, I, yeah, I can be ridic I can ridicule him from now until the end of the unit, the end of the decade. It's not going to change anything. Obama has selected this guy because he's a patsy. He's just a yes man, a Schmendrick. They found they moved him up every step of the way. Now the Schmendrick's running DHS. The Schmendrick wouldn't know if he stepped on a ticking time bomb. He wouldn't know what it was if it was stuck in his shoe. He'd have to refer to a manual. He'd have to refer to a manual to see what the ticking was if he stepped on a ticking time bomb, God forbid. This is running the Department of Homeland Security. You know, if I were ISIS, I'd be laughing today. I'd be laughing at America. I'd laugh at them. These incompetent old men who have no clue, and they're scared, and they're shaking in their boots, and then they have the, uh, the, the, the guy at top who does nothing to stop them. We've got the best Air Force in the world. Didn't bomb the convoy of trucks after Mosul. Didn't bomb them in their in their strongholds. It only it took Russia bombing them that finally made Obama do something, because he finally was f shown for what he was. It took Putin. And you want to hear something on that issue that's really funny, strange rather, not funny in the sense of a Jackie Mason joke. Kind of strange, or you could say weird, if you live in San Francisco. Here is a speech where John Kerry suddenly says that the U.S. is not seeking regime change anymore in Syria. This is, didn't he just meet with Putin? Somebody just met with Putin. All of a sudden, Kerry, the two-faced uh, Paul Bearer, comes back, and he has a, he's singing a new tune, tune now in clip 12. The United States and our partners are not seeking so-called regime change, as it is known, uh, in Syria. What we have said is that we don't believe that Assad uh, himself has the ability to be able to lead the future of Syria. Uh, we focused on a process, on the political process, process whereby yeah. Syrians will be making decisions for the future of Syria. But we do believe that nobody should be forced to choose between a dictator and being plagued by terrorists. Okay, so what he just said is, after meeting with Putin, they've stopped insisting that Assad be uh, uh, forced out of office. That's what just happened. Did you hear this? What just happened? That's what just happened. That's a good thing, finally. Actually, it's a very good thing. Now, there used to be guy in the, a guy in the news named Ted Koppel. Remember him? He was never important. He was just on forever. He had been on forever. The little guy with narrow shoulders, very narrow shoulders. He looked like he had a large head put onto it, like a dummy body. Remember, like a dummy body with a large head, red hair, Ted Koppel. He's trying to retain rele retain relevance. He doesn't have any. He can't retain it. He's trying to gain, regain some relevance after they threw him off ABC. I don't know what he does now. I think he, I don't know where he is. I don't know. Honest to God. I think he's teaching um, public speaking in Kuwait to a group of school children, but he suddenly appears on Fox News, and here he has this to say in clip 15. He's got a lot more hair, but the fact of the matter is that uh, he and Benito Mussolini have this sort of arrogant approach in sort which of. they say very little in terms of substance, but the manner in which they say it gets the crowds excited. Gee, Ted, you know, you may have a new career back on CNN or... Maybe even Fox News is trying you out again. You sound like you fit right in there with them, with Megyn Kelly. You fit right in. I can see how you got where you are, in which they say very little in terms of substance, but the manner in which they say it gets the crowd excited. You didn't seem to have the same thing to say about Obama, did you? You lying, two-faced, tin, tin horn, you. You. F okay, this is what passes now. What else do we have? Uh, Obama's on the way to a vacation. He's going to meet with the families in San Bernardino. White House praises the spending deal with the GOP Congress. 
They got everything they wanted and then some. Is that Obama or just a spokesmouth? Well, it's a spoke. Let me hear the spokesmouth in 17. So we walked into these negotiations. Oh, not him. Focused on making sure. Stop. Turn the war criminal off. If there is a if there is a sane nation after he's out of office, and there's a people tribunal, Josh Ernst is the first to go. He goes up where Goebbels went at Nuremberg. Josh Ernst goes up there with with Goebbels. Don't you love these young, squeaky clean young white men who work for Obama? They get up every morning, bushy tailed, beaver tail, whatever, bushy eye. I don't know how they even say those phrases. Bushy eyed and beaver tailed. I don't know the American phrase. I feel like a foreigner in my own country. Bushy, bushy eyed, bush tailed, bush tailed and beavy eyed, bleary eyed and bush tailed, something like that. They take a shower, they take a shave, they take some pills to, uh, to get them going, and they get up and lie for a living. Could you imagine having to lie for a living? Could you imagine the burden being a human being and every day you wake up knowing that you have to lie for a th- for an individual, that your job, your only job on earth is to lie for somebody who you know is a liar and, and, and ruining the nation. Could you imagine living like that? I wouldn't do, I couldn't do it for all the money in the world. I could do it if my life depended on it. Well, I, I tell you that, no, if my survival depended on it, I could do it. But his survival doesn't depend upon lying for Obama. He must know better. I certainly wouldn't do it for a buck. I've left many careers, by the way, in my life, many one day I'll tell it all in a, in a book. I have walked out on careers because I would not work for certain people. I had to leave cities. I had to walk out. I had to walk out of certain things in my life because I wouldn't do them. Okay, that's neither here nor there. What's here is me. What's there is you. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-BUYC. So, you know, we feel good about the outcome, uh, primarily because we got a compromise budget agreement uh, that, uh, fought off a wide variety of ideological writers, but yet ensures the priorities that this administration has identified when it comes to uh, investing in middle class families and protecting the country. This Goebbels, that's Josh Ernst, the Goebbels of our time, is is crowing that Obama just got everything that he ever dreamed of, and then and then some one point one trillion dollars, him and Pelosi, Ryan the Beard and Pelosi funded. Executive amnesty, sanctuary cities, refugee resettlement operation, illegal alien resettlement, the release of more criminal aliens from prison, a massive increase in foreign labor visa programs, which will displace more American workers so uh, Facebook and Microsoft can make more money, tax credits for illegal aliens, no money to complete the 700-mile double-layer border fence approved 10 years ago, and Goebbels is crowing about it. His boss is clicking his heels, and Goebbels is crowing about it. And who did it? You don't have uh, a Boehner to kick around anymore. He's laying on a on a chaise lounge somewhere in Jacksonville in his condo with a case of booze. They ship him in a case of booze probably every month, and he shickers it up pretty good there, letting it just, oh, he can't. That's all another altar boy. He got his payout. They gave him the case. Once a month, he gets the case. Now you got Paul Ryan, the beard. That's the one with the beard, the young one. He's the young Boehner, but worse. This is a young Boehner, because, and he's even worse than Boehner. Boehner had a pink tie. This one has a beard, a black beard. Let's call him Blackbeard the Pirate, or we'll come up with new names for Ryan. That's all we can do is ridicule him. We got no power. Zero power. The power to the people, huh? Yeah, real power to real people, sure. All power to the people. It's all power to Obama, period, end of story. Where it ends is a neighborhood like San Bernardino near you. Little by little, little by little, a um, a war against us, killing us through a thousand slashes. You know, there's an old adage in the Arabic that when they couldn't kill a man with one blow, they killed him with a thousand slashes. We are the giant that's being killed slowly with a thousand slashes. And yet we could stop them from doing it, but that would require Zuckerberg and the others to shut down the information superhighways in their neighborhoods. And that would cost them a little money. 
I mean, you got to keep those yachts running somehow, don't you? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So we walked into these negotiations um, focused on making sure uh, that Republicans would not succeed uh, in advancing their ideological agenda through the budgetary process. Stop right Uh, there. Have you ever heard anything like this in the entire history of this government? Josh Goebbels Ernst, the the lout, the spokesmouth for Obama, Josh Ernst, the Goebbels of our time, just actually let the cat out of the bag. He said, we fought with them, basically, to stop the Republicans from succeeding in advancing their ideological agenda through the budgetary process. I, I, I mean, I rest my case. You see, this administration does have the capacity to stop ISIS as as it is. But the thing is, Obama does not have the intent to do so. Why is that? People say it's because of the progressive Marxist ideology. ideology. As stated by Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel, never let a crisis go to waste. Never let a crisis go to waste. Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, they could all be enlisted by a legitimate government to shut down the enemy. And you can't see this, can you? Now, in in Government Zero, it's a very important book. I tried to show you, I still try to show you, maybe you'll buy it for Christmas, which is next week, the very cozy relationship between Islamists and Marxists. And when you combine the Marxists or progressives in the administration, no one will argue that they're not progressives, right? Well, what's the difference between a progressive and a Marxist? Nothing. So we'll use the word progressive. When you combine all the progressives in the Obama administration with the Islamists and put that, those ideologies together, you have government zero. A government not of the people, by the people, and for the people, but a government where there is no borders, no language, and no culture. And I said it to you, and it just came out today that I was right again. It doesn't make me happy to say that. He just funded sanctuary cities. He funded all refugee programs. He funded all of the Mideast immigration programs. He funded illegal alien resettlement at a tune of one and a half billion dollars today. He funded the release of criminal aliens. So you say, an enemy couldn't do more. An enemy could not do more harm to this country than this snake in the White House. And what good does screaming about it do for me? And what does it do for you? Well, we have no opposition party whatsoever. Paul Ryan is a beard for Obama. Now, people don't like my idea. One wrote, said, as a tech worker, this is one of the most stupid ideas I've ever heard. What are you going to give up while advocating that the government enslave us at 25% of our salaries and we lose our homes, cars, tuition loans, etc.? He says the average salary of a Silicon Valley software developer is 132000 a year. And if you want the cream of the crop, maybe you should up the salary to around 200000 with incentives. At least you get more return on your money than paying our senators and representatives that type of money. He says, where would that money come from to pay for attractive salaries and facilities? He says, so quit trying to put the burden on a small group of people. I have an answer for him. It's simple. You take the greedy buccaneers who you work for. The greedy buccaneers who capitalized on the Internet without having created it. Those who took the information superhighways that were created with government money. You take the greedy capitalist, like that ugly little creature who runs Microsoft, who hates America. And you force that bum to pay you a full salary while you dedicate yourself to protecting America and Americans. You make that little bum pay you a full salary while you work for America. That's how you get the money you deserve. You make that bum give something up. You make Bill Gates some, give something up instead of that two-foot that two foot shuffle that he gives. Him and Warren Buffett go into the same school, making believe they're so kind and so nice with their largesse to liberal organizations, which is just a method of keeping the government off their back. Let them pay their fair share of taxes. Let them stop using the double Irish tax techniques to avoid paying taxes in this country. How do you think they get away with not paying their taxes? They give millions of dollars to the government. Millions of dollars in fundraising. So he could shuffle off to Honolulu, putting more money in his kitty, in his war chest, for more progressive Marxists. 